So if you are currently stuck in Strategyville, where you are constantly trying to find the exact strategy that will grow your trading account or even transform your trading exponentially, or let's say you feel stuck and you feel that you lack some kind of knowledge or understanding, essentially, which is just the gap of where you are right now and where you want to go. Well, I'm going to share a story with you that might change that belief in this video. So a couple of days back, I closed my S&P 500 trade and there was close to a thousand pips trade that I held since last year, October 2023. So I'm going to go over the reasons why I entered the trade initially and then I'll go over the reasons why I then decided to exit because if I've been holding for so long, there's a reason why I've been holding and then there's also a definitely a reason why I exited the trade. So I'll, we're just going to go over the trade real quick and uh, there's something that you'll definitely learn from it. So before we, we even get to breaking down the trade, so this is the realized performance. This is the spreadsheet that we use in the group to actually track our trades. As you can see so far, if you look just up here on top, so far I've taken 40 trades, 26 winning trades, 14 losing trades. Win ratio is 65%. My portfolio is currently, as you can see, return on capital, currently up 300 and 305%, right? So as you can see here, this is where we track all the trades and it gives us a profit and loss, profit percentage, profit and loss in dollars, profit and loss percentages. So if I scroll down to the bottom right here, you can see here's the trade, US 500 and just $948, right? So that is where we close the trade. And I've been holding that trade for 119 days. And then if you look at the cumulative balance here, as you can see, we've been going up and up and up. And of course, just like it, an uptrend in the market, we have impulse and correction, right? So this is how it looks. So now let us actually go on to the trade so that we can break it down. So we're going to go quickly to our spreadsheet here and then let us go on to trading view, right? Because we need a chart to actually break this down. So I'm just going to show you the reason why I took the trade, the reason why I held, and then of course, the reason why I exited just to show you how simplified it can be on a surface level before we even keep we go deeper into the actual uh details of how to apply fundamental analysis right so this is the s p 500 uh, let us go into the daily chart So the key thing to understand here is that interest rates drive everything, but inflation drives interest rates. So in the last video, I had shared how if the United States CPI comes in greater than what is expected, then we'd obviously look for opportunities to sell indices and buy the dollar, right? And if we go into the four hour, just to do, just to show you that analysis that I had shared in that video, of course, markets did not push up as high as I would have wanted to for me to look to actually take selling opportunities. But essentially, it is just an emphasis on that interest rates drive everything, but inflation drives interest rates. If you know where inflation is headed, you will know where interest rates are headed, right? And if you know where interest rates are headed, you will know where, where currencies, the direction that currencies will take, number one. Then number two, you will know the direction that indices will take, that Bitcoin will take, that gold will take. Specifically, when it comes to the United States interest rates, because they drive everything. Remember, the United States dollar is what is a world reserve currency. So whatever happens in the United States, it's going to have a global effect. Yes, it might differ in terms of scale, depending on that economy. But for most economies, they will be affected by what happens in the United States, especially in terms of interest rates, right? So let's go back to the daily time frame and let's get to the reasons why I had actually took this trade and why now I actually decided to close the trade. So let's quickly just uh, delete all these drawings that we have here. 
So, like I said, interest rates drive everything, right? But in, but inflation drives interest rates. So we're definitely going to need an interest rate chart for us to see how we could have positioned ourselves in the markets, right? So what we have in front of you, as you can see with the, with the red and green candlesticks, that is the United States 10-year bond yield, right? That is the benchmark yield or benchmark interest rates, right? So how it goes, the market follows it. By market, I mean specifically the currency. So in this case, the United States dollar will follow the direction of the what? Of the US 10-year bond yield. Yield essentially means interest rates. Just, just keep that in mind. Whenever I say yield, I mean interest rate, right? So the market or the, the dollar, which is the currency, will follow in the, the actual yield. But indices, Bitcoin, as well as what as well as gold they go in the opposite direction to that and a simple reason why they do they go in the opposite direction to interest rates it is because when interest rates go up they're gonna hurt businesses right when interest rates go up they're gonna hurt businesses they're gonna hurt consumers because they what they decrease the disposable income that consumers have they decrease the the the, the profits that businesses have which ultimately does what which ultimately decreases consumer spending. And if consumers are not spending that much, that means that businesses are not making that much money because their customers are not spending as much. So what does that do? That results in what? In lower prices for businesses. By prices, I mean share price and as well as earnings as well as profits. That's what I mean. So it results in lower prices for businesses because they're not making as much money. So what needs to happen at that point? As investors, we then sell businesses or we sell the stock market and indices are just a what? A collection of businesses. So that is why when interest rates are going up or are anticipated or expected to go higher or to remain higher, then we see indices falling, we see Bitcoin falling, we see uh, gold falling because the first two, Bitcoin as well as indices, they are a form of investment. Bitcoin is just an alternative form of investment uh, to, to the stock market. So that is why it moves in the same direction as what? As indices, as well as gold, because gold is paid against what? The United States dollar. So whenever interest rates are going up in the United States, investors view it as there is the United States dollar that is paying me, let's say, 4% interest. But we have gold on the other hand. Yes, it's a safe investment. Yes, it's a storage of value. Yes, it's a good hedge against high inflation. But for me to rather put my money in gold, that's not going to give me any return in terms of interest. But we have the dollar there that is giving me 4% interest. Then investors are going to do what? They're going to take their money and put it in the dollar. So that is why when interest rates in the United States are going up, the dollar strengthens and then gold generally weakens because of that, right? Because investors are choosing to put their money in the dollar because they're going to get a good return than just storing it in gold, right? So that is the reasons why gold pushes higher whenever interest rates are expected to go lower in the United States, but it pushes lower whenever interest rates are expected to go higher in the, in the United States. Because the, as an investor, you're always thinking, what is the best way I can protect my money or my profits against what? Against inflation. And for that to happen, you need to have something that is paying you a higher interest compared to inflation. Then that is why con investors will go to dollar instead of what? Instead of gold. So these are the two, two charts that we have right here. So when did I enter this trade? I entered this trade around... October 2023 right the market had started going down well the black the black and the black and white candlesticks this is the S&P 500 so that had started going down around July 2023 it bottomed out around October 2023 and started pushing higher right and as you can see when the actual indices were going lower the interest rates were going higher and remember interest rates drive everything interest rates were going higher in this case the US 10 year yield was going higher and then when it actually when it actually did what right, let me do this yeah so when it actually peaked the interest rates when it actually peaked and started going lower 
what did we see in indices? As you can see, they bottomed out and started doing what? And started pushing higher, right? So like I said, they have that opposite uh, relationship between indices as well as interest rates. And I explained why. It, go it has to do with businesses and customers, which is consumers, right? So that is the first thing that we understand that we need to focus on the interest rates. But secondly, what drives interest rates? Inflation. So now let us go and look at inflation in terms of what was inflation doing around that period. And of course, right now, I also exited the trade, as you can see, as indices were falling. Why? Because of inflation, right? Because inflation came out higher than what was expected in the United States. So it meant that interest rates would need to do what? We need to stay higher for longer. And that will that is going to definitely what? hurt businesses if it hurts businesses it's definitely hurting consumers because it means that the the mortgage payment or the or the interest payment on their loans whether it's a student loan whether it's a car financing mortgage loan any type of loan it's still going to remain high in terms of interest payment so it's still going to eat into their disposable income which means it's going to lower the consumer spending even more right so what will that do? That is going to hurt businesses. And what are indices? Indices are a collection of businesses. So what's going to happen to indices? They're going to fall because interest rates are expected to remain higher for longer. The Fed is not expected to cut interest rates in their next meeting, which is in May, uh, the, the 1st of May, or in the June meeting either, right? So what does that do? That means it's going to hurt indices. So what do we do as investors? We sell indices, right? Or we sell the stock market, essentially. And that is why we're seeing indices falling because of inflation that actually drives interest. So now that we understand the relationship between inflation and interest rates, let's go into our spreadsheet. So around July, June, July 2023, as well as October 2023, to find the reasons why the stock market started falling and why I actually bought when, when, when I saw that happening, right? So let us go into straight into inflation, right? Let us go quickly into the inflation tab because we understand inflation drives interest rates, right? So 2023, July, right? As you can see, this is the United States. And as you can see, inflation had been going what? Had been going lower at that point. So from 5 to 4.9 to 4.1 to 3%. Then it jumped to 3.2, then 3.7 in August, as you can see. Then it remained at 3.7 in what? In September, right? So that gave the market a, an indication that inflation could potentially be what? Be sticky or it could potentially be going up now. Because you can see inflation had been going lower all this time. As you can see that the, the, the cells on, on, on this Excel spreadsheet, they are red. So it means that the next month was lower than the previous month, right? And then eventually we jumped from 3 to 3.2. So now the next month started being higher than the previous month, which is why we're having green cells, right? Or color-coded in green. So what was the indication there? Or what was the market participants expecting? That It means that inflation is rebounding higher. And if inflation is going higher, then interest rates should follow inflation, which means interest rates will stay higher or the Fed will resume hiking or continue hiking interest rates, right? So what does that do to the stock market? That sends the stock market lower, right? And which is why it, around August 2023, as you can see, July, August 2023, that is when, that is when indices started going lower and the, the US 10-year yield started pushing higher aggressively because market participants were pricing in that maybe inflation is stickier. The Fed has not yet achieved their goal of lowering inflation. So markets started expecting higher interest rates. And that is why as investors, we started selling what? Indices. But I did not sell indices. I only got to buy indices, right? And why did I buy indices? Because the opposite was now happening. So let us go back to our spreadsheet real quick. Um, so as you can see, if we look at core inflation, so around around uh, September, then in October, headline inflation dipped to 3.2, right? But if we look at core inflation, core inflation had been going down all this time. So in as much as headline inflation was pushing higher, core inflation was giving us 
lower man lower prints the next month than the previous month which is good which was comforting to the federal reserve so when in july when in october inflation gave us a 3.2 print dropping from 3.7 then markets started saying probably the downward trend in inflation is resuming and then looking at core inflation coupling that with core inflation core inflation moved from 4.1 to to 4% in the beginning of 2023 as you can see core inflation was at 5.6% now we're sitting at 4% around October so the market started viewing that okay inflation is slowing down this was just a bump along a downward trend in inflation so these few months they were showing higher prints with just a bump then market started pricing in that okay the fed will definitely go is go, gonna need to consider cutting interest rates soon and like i said since inflation drives interest rates now that inflation core inflation is at four percent and also headline inflation has ju has just dropped from 3.7 to 3.2 markets started going back to pricing in interest rate cuts in the united states and that is why we we, we had what happened we saw interest rates fall because interest rates always follow inflation we saw interest rates fall and then we saw indices go up because if interest rates are expected to 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 be cut not that they've been cut yet but they are expected to be cut then what does that do to 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 the actual uh central bank or what does that do sorry to to businesses that means that now someone who was paying let's say six thousand rands for their for their interest payment in terms of uh let's say a, a a mortgage loan now if interest rates do go lower they will let's say maybe end up paying five thousand so now that they have that thousand rand buffer that they can use to do it to spend whether buy something or spend on businesses or spend on investing in the stock market or even buying some crypto some bitcoin right so that is why when interest rates are expected to go lower not to say they are going lower but they're expected to go lower as in as investors we are now forecasting that and we are trying to position ourselves ahead of time and that is why indices bottomed out around october 2023 right as you can see around towards the end of october 2023 around 27 there and then they started pushing higher and that is the reason why i've been holding all this time why if we go back to 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 our spreadsheet and we look at inflation inflation has then been going lower since then even with core inflation it has been going lower and lower and lower right until it re it, it rebounded to it well it remained stuck or stagnated at 3.8 at 3.9 now it's sort of stagnated at 3.8 so the trend downward trend in inflation is slowing down is that that's the first thing that we're seeing in the united states but secondly that is why that sorry that's the first reason why i've been holding because inflation is going lower which means that interest rates are expected to go lower so indices will continue pushing higher why did i exit now because what we saw happening around july 2023 where inflation started ticking up for two months it's what we are currently seeing happening in the first well let's say yeah in the first that we saw happening in the first half of 2024 right as you can see from 3.1 Previously, it was a three point. It jumped to three point four from three point one, dropped to three point one. Now jumped to three point two, then three point five. So, the same reaction that we had here, around June or around July, August, twenty twenty three, when we saw markets actually fall in terms of indices, it is a similar reaction that we're having here. Why? Because inflation seems to be pushing higher. And that is going to drive interest rates in as much as interest rates drive everything but inflation drives interest rates specifically interest rates expectations so now expectations are that the interest rates in the united states will stay higher for longer like i said they're not going to cut cut interest rates anytime soon which is the the, the next meeting at the end of in the beginning of may or in their june meeting right so what does that do that that is negative for businesses that is negative for consumers and that is why we're seeing indices fall so that is the reason why i entered this trade now you know and the reason why i exited this trade so i did not exit because of a technical level that we have reached a resistance because we had numerous uh, let me actually since now you saw the us 10-year yield let me hide that we've had numerous resistance levels 
this was one major one where I could have closed my trade because the market had came into a resistance level and actually showed as if showed showed signs of the fact that it is struggling to break through. If I wasn't trading with fundamentals or with what actually moves the market and I was only focusing on how markets move because that is what technical analysis essentially is. It is how markets move, but fundamentals is why markets move. Then I could have potentially closed this trade when it got to this resistance here. And you see, it sort of showed as if it was failing to break. But because I was paying attention to inflation, that is going to drive interest rates. It was telling me to keep on holding and that is why I held up until this point that I've actually closed my trade because inflation has told me that there is higher risks that the Fed keeps interest rates higher for longer. And markets have priced in, I think, only two rate cuts this year in 2024 from three. Some were pricing in four at some point. So they've been reduced significantly to two. And some are even saying maybe we could we will only get one interest rate cut. So that is where market participants are in terms of interest rate expectations. And that is essentially why I sold um I sold my position, which of course was a buy, because if you're exiting a buy position, it means you sold it. So someone could someone could, could be on the other hand of the transaction or the other side of the transaction. So that is why I sold indices and exited my buy position that I've been holding, right? So now you understand the reason why I took the position and the reason why I exited the position. But the key thing that you need to take away from this video or that I need you to take away from this video is that interest rates drive everything but inflation drives interest rates. If you understand where inflation is headed, you will understand where interest rates are headed and it will be easier for you to identify the direction on currencies. It will be easier for you to, to identify the direction on indices, identify the direction on commo even commodities, specifically oil, as well as gold. And of course, like I said, Bitcoin as well. If you understand inflation and interest rates, and then of course, you will start incorporating your, your unemployment and all those other uh, macroeconomic data or, or indicators, then everything just makes sense. Everything just gels beautifully together, right? So that is what I wanted to share with, with you guys. And of course, I also got a question that does or do fundamentals only work for swing trades? Do they work for day trades? And yes, they do work for day trades. I actually took a sell position yesterday on GBP AUD, right? Because of yesterday we had the the UK, we had UK what? We had UK inflation come out yesterday. So, so we sold around because it came out at, as you can see here. This is when inflation came out in the in the UK and then we sold at this high and then I exited around one it was one 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 point nine 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 three one seven nine three four one seven yeah it was around here nine three four one seven so it was around here so I caught this move from this high all the way here right and it was a day trade based on fundamental based on news release so it does not only work for swing trading like i always say i do not classify myself as a swing trader i am just a trader or an investor if the market is giving me an opportunity to swing trade i will swing trade if the market is giving me an opportunity to day trade then that is what i will do i will day trade right but if you want to see a description of the actual because i took screenshots of the conversation before the trade and the actual screenshots of the trade you can find that on my socials right i posted that on my socials but i thought i should just answer that question for everyone here who might also be asking themselves but i consider myself a day trader not me but they would be telling themselves that that i only day trade will fundamentals work for me yes they do work for you as well right but just from me to you rather not box yourself and say you are a day trader you trade the setup that the market gives to you because if you understand fundamentals you can trade long term you can trade short term depending on the setup that the market is actually giving to you right so i just wanted to share this video with you this video with you guys and of course on uh on uh friday which is tomorrow 
on Friday evening, I'll be hosting a free webinar. Uh, so just check the first link in the description. Uh, that is where you'll be able to actually access the webinar, right? So it will be over Zoom and it will be just an hour to empower. That is what I'm just going to do. Just going to be talking markets, Q&A sessions, and I'll be teaching you guys some uh, interesting stuff uh, about fundamentals, right? So if you think what I've shown you right now, if it blows your mind, then wait for your mind to be blown once we actually engage and I get to answer some of the questions that you have, right? So just wanted to share this video with you guys. And like I said, if you are in that stage or if you were in that stage before this video where you felt that there's, uh, you lack some sort of understanding and knowledge that will take you or move you from where you are to where you want to go, I'd say this is the first step in the right direction. If you implement fundamental analysis in your trading, it's the first step in the right direction. And then as you keep on adding more knowledge and, and layering that knowledge, then everything just becomes clear as day, right? So that is the video. And of, of course, as always, if you liked this video uh, or you found value from it, if you have not yet subscribed, please do subscribe. Uh, it's definitely going to help in sharing the video with other people that might also benefit from it. If you found value from it, then definitely someone else will. And turn on the notification bell if you have not so that you can be notified when I upload another video. And of course, like the video if you found value from it as well. So until next time, guys, cheers.